I'm very glad to see a full house, so many uh, smiling faces as I expected from our MB program, but so many of our Gamba friends are also here. So it's really great to have all of you. And of course, it's uh, always nice to welcome for me, uh, my friend, right, uh, Karen, to come here. And because Karen, uh, I, I, I met him very regularly in different occasions because we are in the so-called the present roundtable for multinationals, so we see each other at least uh, uh, once a month. And especially these times, both of us, we don't travel that much, so we see each other even more. And also, uh, it, it, is, it is our honor that last year we invited Michelin and uh, Cameron into our uh, corporate advisory board, so that's why we will see him quite often, uh, at least twice a year on this campus and so it's very nice to, to have him today with a huge team from Michelin joining also. So all our colleagues from Michelin also here. And of course, the topic we will hear today is also extremely relevant and important. We all know that we just, uh, we are going through one of the darkest uh, health crises in the human history. And of course, we are lucky in China we can do this kind of event with a mask with all of you. But still, we have to think about all our takeaways. And as here, most of you are already business leaders uh, in your company. So what, what should we do? How we can reflect and how we can improve ourselves, but also our organization. So that's why the topic on these uh, purpose-driven uh, companies, uh, I think it's very relevant. And uh, Cameron will share with us many of uh, the practice in Michelin and uh, his personal thoughts, uh, given his very deep uh, scientific uh, background, because as you might know, Cameron uh, graduated from two top uh, uh, French engineer schools with a master degree from Bon Echosse and also a PhD in uh, mechanic engineering from uh, Central. So uh, we are very honored to have Cameron with us. And uh, welcome, Cameron, and the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, first of all, I would like to, to tell you Happy New Year, because uh, till Friday, we can still tell Happy New Year. So, so Happy New Year, I'm very happy that we start the new year with, uh, with a great event like that. As you saw, I have a very <laughs> scientific background, but uh, and uh, each time I'm in an educational environment, uh, I feel good because uh, I believe that uh, educating people is key for the future of human being. So that's why I feel good being with you today. And uh, this year especially is the year of the ox, which is loyalty, resilience, power, energy, and optimism. So this is all we need <laughs> to move forward. So the topic of, um, I will present myself later, but uh, the topic of today uh, is uh, why I believe that uh, after this crisis, the, the purpose-driven companies will revive and will come back. And this is key for, the, for performing uh, not only in business as a business point of view, but uh, in many other domains. But before uh, going through the journey of uh, purpose-driven companies, uh, I would like to start my presentation talking about someone who inspired me in our company and who was extremely purpose-driven. So Francois Michelin was uh, one of the managing partners of Michelin Company. And uh, I had the opportunity when I entered the company to meet him two times because he was uh, no anymore managing partner, but he was coming to the, to the headquarter. And uh, this famous sentence from him is, uh, was among the quality declaration of our company. And I always remember, it always remembered me that at the end of the day, the true bosses of the company are customers because they choose, they have the right to choose. And by this right, they are the real bosses of the company. And he was the boss of the company for 30 years, and he was saying that to all newcomers to the company. But I can tell you that this guy was extremely purpose-driven, 
both uh, personally, because he, he had very deep values in his life, and also professionally, because uh, if Michelin is a multinational company today, it's thanks to him. Because in 75, he totally transformed Michelin company from a French company to a multinational. He dared to buy Beth Goodrich Uni Royal in US. So during 10 years, Michelin was opening one factory per year. You can imagine what does it mean. <laughs> so uh, that's why I wanted to start this, uh, this session with him, because being purpose-driven is not only for companies, it's also for people. And uh, he was extremely purpose-driven. But another reason, before going to our topics, uh, because he was here in 2022, because as he believed on human being and the fact that everybody is unique, he was believing that our company needed to invest in people. So when he came to, to China, he didn't uh, go through the where I need to put my factory and to have the best uh, tax return from the government. So the first question was where I should invest to educate my employees. And Michelin, I discovered that recently that Michelin was one of the first partners of SIBS in 2021. And uh, François Michelin was here to congratulate the first, I don't know, first, second or third uh, promotion of, uh, of graduates from, from, uh, from SIBS. And he was here with the management team and, uh, and with Edward Michelin, who was the managing partner at that moment. So you see the story of Michelin is, uh, with SIBS is not started today. So it's a very long lasting performance. Because coming back to the topic of today, because uh, when I, uh, I try to understand why 20 years ago a company come to SIBS, because when I saw the purpose, which is uh, being uh, consciousness, being excellent and uh, being innovative, these are exactly what drive Michelin company. We have uh, innovation in our DNA. We have excellence in operation as a, one of the biggest values of our company. Because in our factories, especially without, I was factory manager in our company, without that is impossible to move forward. So as the values are the same, and the purpose are, let's say, reaching together, so this journey is lasting now for 20 years. So purpose-driven means also we can go far when we are purpose-driven. At the same moment, uh, also I wanted to share you what we did together since 20 years. <laughs> so, Professor Ding, so it's not new, so we work on some case studies. We were just talking before with some professors in the room behind, beside. So we have, uh, we participated in some leadership programs with, uh, with, uh, with you some strategic trainings for the executive of the company, and also we have uh, created our first talent pool, and uh, we are continuing to doing that today. And beside that, I have a good news for you. So what's this good news for you? So these guys are Michelin executives who has been trained in your campus in 2020. 2000, sorry, 10, sorry. So I have a very good news for you. In this picture, you have the two current managing partners of Michelin company. So it means that uh, graduating from SIPS, you can go very, very far. <laughs> <laughs> this is excellent. So, uh, but uh, this is also another example just to tell that uh, uh, coming here with the team, I just discovered that uh, we are going to sign an agreement, but uh, 10 years ago, we were very active uh, with, uh, with SIBS, and now we are just coming back and reconnecting the, the connection that already exists. And uh, so you have uh, Flor Menigo in the middle of the picture, and you have uh, Yves Chapeau, who was in charge of uh, China. It was my, my current job at that moment, and uh, they are now the, the big bosses of the company. So, prepare yourself. <laughs> so,
So at the end, uh, I would like also to make a tribute to, to, uh, to you, Professor Ding, and all professors who contributed to give us great people. Because if Michelin became what we are today in China after 30 years, it's thanks to great people from this, this uh, campus, this uh, corporation who integrated our company. So I'm not going to name them one by one, but uh, here you have uh, who are in uh, senior management positions in our company and also who are, let's say, in C-suite, these famous C-suite jobs reporting to, to me directly. So uh, we will be happy so to, to integrate uh, if uh, a common journey is possible tomorrow and if you like to, to, to have a common journey together. So two of them, they told me, do not show this picture. We are not yet graduated. I said, no, <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> so we will manage that. <laughs> so to make it short, the story of uh, SIPS, and, uh, and Michelin in China, and Michelin worldwide, because as you saw, it's not just about Michelin China. As we are both purpose-driven, as we share a part of, of same values, so we are moving fast and we are moving long. I choose this picture because, as you know, the crane is a, is a symbol of longevity in Chinese culture. This is the Queen's Palace. If you didn't visit that in Beijing, I strongly recommend you to visit that. And, uh, and as you know, the Queen uh, lived for many years. And, uh, and I hope that uh, this reconnection of the dots that we make today with Professor Dings will last for the, for the upcoming 10, 20, 30, 40 years uh, in front of us. So this is the first part of my presentation, just to say I'm happy to be with you, and we reconnected that. The second thing, I told myself how I'm going to present myself to you. Or I can send a boring CV and explain what I did. So I try to be more purpose-driven and innovative. So it is me. <laughs> So I'm a civil engineer, so I like construction, and my first job was to construct metallic constructions. I like connections with people, but today is more than people, it's also objects and many other things. I am a big fan of Lego. <laughs> yes, because uh, Lego is all about construction, innovation and creativity. And uh, as I gave this virus to my kids, I have three kids, as you see, two daughters and one uh, son. So they are also fan of Lego. So we have small pieces of Lego everywhere at home. And each time my wife walk on a small piece of Lego, she cries, so, but it's fine. So I like cooking because cooking is also creativity, is assembling nice things, flavors, uh, this picture, I took that when I was in Moscow, because uh, you have the soya sauce. So I will love the Chinese uh, cuisine. So, but we didn't discover that in China, but we discovered that when we were not in China. That was when I told to my kids, we are going to China. That was very easy, because they told, great, we are going to have everyday Chinese food. <laughs> uh, I like mountain climbing. And... Uh, I have been to the top of this mountain. I let you guess where it is. I believe in diversity. So my name and my track record, you can imagine that I'm a diverse product. And I believe in diversity and connection of people. I have a, many respects for different cultures because I believe that tomorrow belongs to people who can get the best part of his culture and make a big and interesting mix of that. So uh, as Professor Ding said, uh, this is uh, one of the output of my PhD. I was doing uh, 3D modeling with finite elements method to simulate the structures during an earthquake. Don't ask me what I'm doing in entire business. So, but I joined a tire company and, uh, and before that I was working on corporate finance. 
That's why you have a nice uh, uh, calculating machine there. And uh, I really love the Chinese culture. Uh, and I'm discovering many, many things as a personal and professional point of view in China. So I hope that my presentation was not boring. <laughs> Give me your feedback later. So now let's go to the topic of today, which is purpose-driven companies. But as you see in my life, I have also some purpose. And you can connect the dots between these pictures. There are some common points. Because I am also a purpose-driven guy. I'm sure that you have also some values of life. You have also your purpose of life. Because if you don't have it, I think that it will be difficult for you in upcoming years because the world is going to a direction that we will be asked why you are here, why you would like to, what you would like to become, what are your values. You will be in front of some decisions tomorrow, and if you don't clarify your purpose before and your values before, you will have some difficult moments. And I will try to show you some examples of our company. But before that, as I mentioned to you, as you see today, we are living in a, uh, let's say, a messy situation. <laughs> it's the, the minimum thing that we can say. So our planet is at risk because of the activity of human being. For many years, I think that we destroyed our planet or we didn't use the resources of planet properly. The first right of the human being, which is mobility to moving from point A to point B, is under constraint today. So his mobility is threatened today. This, uh, this race for growth uh, without boundaries today is under question, as you see at the worldwide level. Uh, countries and people who were pushing globalization are the first now to come back and to say, maybe this is not exactly what we need to do, and they, they are going to more protectionism and uh, to put boundaries. And unfortunately, some basic values of the human being that uh, we thought that is sold forever, now uh, they are coming back with very, very bad examples in the most developed countries of the world, from racism to respect of democracy and everything. So all of these beautiful things that I mentioned to do make people angry. And uh, they maybe lost their, their, their repair. They lost their direction. And, uh, and you see that in, uh, from uh, this famous um, movement of uh, yellow jackets in France to, the, to the, this event in capital city in the US. So these are not normal events. These are not things that we would like to to see happen every day. But one of the reasons behind for me, we will see that, this is my point of view, is also values and the purpose. So under all of these constraints, we can have two behaviors. We can say, okay, it's like that, and uh, next generation will solve this problem. But uh, I'm also always driven by a very famous sentence of Leonardo Vinci. Leonardo Vinci, I don't need to explain him. He was an innovator, creative guy, paint, philosopher, engineer, everything. But one sentence that I like, he was always saying, he was always putting himself in difficult situation. A painting, I don't know, a 40 square meter in a, in a church, I mean, building a helicopter, when we even don't know what does it mean flying. So, but he has a very famous sentence, which is, all constraints are blessing to me. It means that all constraints, that uh, the life or the situation bring to me is a gift. Because it helped me to think, to reinvent, to go beyond boundaries and to see things differently. If you have time, just uh, look at his paintings. It's crazy. Uh, the time that he spent just uh, to, to find the right shape uh, of a hand of the, I don't know, uh, the different paintings, uh, more, more, most of them are religious painting. But, um, but in, in that one is also his painting. He's an autoportrait of himself, as you know. 
is a very famous one. So as all constraints are blessing, especially in Michelin company, we see in this situation opportunities. Because we believe that the innovation is the answer to the problem that we created in the planet. We believe that mobility, which is our core business today, can be under constraint. But the motion is boundless. The connection between people, between objects, is boundless. We believe that the race for endless profitability and growth without boundaries, maybe it arrives to an end. And it will be replaced by sustainable development, which is more prosperous. We believe in a win-win relations between nations, between people, between different corporations. And we believe that at the end of the day, the human values will triumph. And uh, this is just, let's say, an ugly parenthesis bracket in the life of human being that we are living today. And we believe that the answer to the situation of anger of people is to give them trust. To give them trust, you should be very clear on your values and you should have a clear purpose. But, so the answer is, uh, is all about giving meaning to the life and giving purpose to people at work. That's why it's so important to being purpose driven, not only in companies, but also as individuals. At the same moment, I try to understand finally what is purpose. So what does it mean? So if you open uh, different dictionaries, so purpose is uh, the reason that you exist. In another dictionary, I found that purpose means uh, uh, where you would like to be or uh, what you would like to become. So all these things are beautiful, but before going through the purpose, I would like to explain to you that purpose for me is nothing. And at the same moment, purpose is everything. Because if your purpose as a company is just nice words in a website or in a mobile app, or in a beautiful PowerPoint that you present to shareholders, or a nice uh, picture that you put in a recruitment uh, room when you would like to attract people, purpose is nothing. Because you don't walk the talk. But if your purpose is serious, is clear, is visible, and uh, you can prove it, but you don't need to prove it normally because it's so obvious and you leave this purpose, purpose is becoming everything. And you are driven by your purpose in all your decision making, in all investments that you are doing, in all actions that you are taking in our company toward environment for your business and toward your people. So before explaining what's his purpose, I would like just to tell you, never forget that. Purpose can be nothing. At the same moment, purpose can become everything. So for me, purpose, first of all, is something that makes the difference. Purpose is something that makes you authentic. I take another picture. Not surprising for you, knowing me, is another structure. So it's in Forbidden City. But what is genius in this picture? What is genius in the structure of Forbidden City? It's authentic because there is no any nail used for the construction of this structure. Because all this structure all connected in a special shape. They are connected together. You cannot dislock them. At the same moment, they resist. And they resist for, I don't know how many hundred years, for earthquakes, everything. So being authentic and being purpose-driven and being authentic and being different from others, the first answer for me is you can go long 
you can be much more resilient than others. That's why if you look at uh, to the literature, I'm not going to repeat to you the things that you can read in many papers. This is not the objective. I'm here to talk about my conviction and my experience. So uh, you can be more resilient. You can have loyal people to your company. You can have loyal customers. And you can go, you can run faster than others because you are authentic. The second thing when it goes to being uh, purpose driven, purpose is also the goal of the goal. I like uh, who are French in this room. We have a very famous sentence in our company in France. We call it but de but. It means the goal of the goal. Because each time that we disagree, we try to say, OK, but what is the goal of the goal? And the goal of the goal always drives us to take the best decision, even if we disagree. So your goal of the goal should touch many people. Their fulfillment, of course, and it should be good for society. So companies who are purpose driven, companies who are trying to reach many people. So for example, do you know what is the goal of the goal of Michelin company? Not our purpose, our goal of the goal. We don't communicate on that. This is secret. This is just for Michelin people. <laughs> but I can tell it to you because we don't communicate. But the goal of the goal of our company is the fulfillment of human being. We are not tire sellers. And I'm trying to explain it to you in a few, few minutes. So like this beautiful Eiffel Tower that I'm sure that you know, at the beginning, it has been built just to be the entrance of the International Fair in 1889. And today it became a symbol of a culture and an icon of a country. It touched many people. I think that uh, before COVID-19 was the most paid visited monument of the world. So from something that was built to be destroyed after this fair, that was the objective and that was just to say, just look, uh, in France, we are great. We can build uh, that one and we can destroy it uh, just after. That was the entrance. This is a door. <laughs> and this door became a huge monument, touching many people, giving sense to a country, a culture, and presenting that. And the third thing that I would like to share with you today about the purpose, the purpose is everywhere in any decision of the company. And the purpose, you cannot escape. It shows exactly and truly who you are. Because you need to walk the talk. And companies who don't walk the talk will be in difficulty. I choose this picture from the Sichuan Theater. I think that you know about that. Because I found that there are two things. At the same moment that this guy are changing the, the mask uh, every 30 seconds, at the end of the day, they always play the same role. They have a very clear mission in the, in the storytelling. So that's why I find it interesting to explain that you should walk the talk at the same moment. The purpose will show you who truly you are. So if you ask me, What's purpose and what's being purpose driven? There are three things, just to repeat it, like a professor. <laughs> I just explained to Professor Ding that my father was professor at university, so always checking my, uh, my homework uh, <laughs> is not a joke. And, um, and uh, the first thing is being authentic. The second thing is touching many people. It should be good for the society and not just for your company. And at the end, it should be something that shows exactly who you are. So I'm trying to explain you who, who we are. So in Michelin company, we believe that mobility is essential for the development of human being. And we believe that we need with a huge passion to innovate for the development of human being. In Michelin company, we believe at the same moment that every individual in our company is unique. 
is authentic. And our job in our company is to put in place an ecosystem so everybody can be developed and can show how unique he or she is. So in our company, at the end of the day, we care about people. And we care about giving people a better way forward. So we are Michelin. We used to say always we are Michelin when we act as leaders, when we act for change, and when we act as, uh, with respect. So have it in mind, the purpose of Michelin company is that one. We care about giving people a better way forward. And I will take a few minutes to give you some examples that I hope that trigger some reflection for you uh, who are working already or is, are going to work in some companies. So we are, so Michelin, if I ask you, you will just say, yes, it's a tire company. Always people in China ask me, restaurant, you are also in charge of restaurants? This is, this is the question that always makes me nervous. I, you are also in charge of restaurants? Uh, yes, uh, we, we don't have two companies. It's one company. So in, our company has been founded in 1889, okay? the same year of the, the, um, that the Eiffel Tower has been built. In, in 1899, it means roughly 10 years after, so as we care about giving people a better way forward, we launch a challenge to ourselves. This is the kind of car that you can find in uh, 1899. So we said, is it possible? And these cars are going to 50 kilometers per hour. You can imagine how boring is that was at that moment. So we said, can we invent a car that goes at, this, at that moment 100 kilometers per hour? And it should be on Michelin tires. Do you think that we achieved this challenge? I was not there in 1899. <laughs> <laughs> but some people told me, yes. This is a real picture, huh? it's not a fake. The name of this uh, car, I will tell it in French for French people, is La Jamais Contente. They're never satisfied. You see the shape, uh, maybe today is, is normal to see these kind of things, but uh, you can imagine how was the car before. And this car is running on a Michelin tire. It's a white tire. And it looks like more the tires that we use today. So at that moment, as we were from the beginning, a purpose-driven company, we said, because we find a way to, to sell more tires, we didn't need at that moment to sell more tires. And nobody needs this kind of cars and this kind of tires. But we said we need to push our industry. We need to, to give people another way forward or a better way forward. And we went through this journey. As you know now that uh, we are also in charge of uh, restaurants. <laughs> so in, in 90, so uh, the first uh, Michelin Red Guide or Michelin Restaurant Guide has been given, has been given, sorry, to uh, to drivers for free. So why we did it? I asked myself the question: Why we gave for free in '90? Because as people started traveling, so we said, "Wow, well, is now we should tell people where to stop, especially who are driving." And driving is your, they walk, they are not going as tourists. Because uh, 19, we have the first light trucks, not yet trucks, but light trucks. So people transport goods with cars. And we said we should give, uh, give people uh, some, uh, a kind of, um, let's say, new way of, uh, of uh, enjoying the journey. So, and we invented that one. So today, of course, uh, people should pay to buy the red guy, it's not for free. But the red guy is a still independent activity. If we move forward, in 1908, so we are a tire manufacturer. And Michelin was crazy enough to launch a prize to say, okay, 
you see how it will I didn't find a better uh, picture. This is an airplane in uh, 1908. And we were crazy enough to say, uh, we will give, uh, that was uh, 100,000 francs at that moment. It's a huge amount of money, huge amount of money at that time. We said, if someone is capable to start from Paris, to come to Clermont and to land on the top of the Puy de Dôme, which is this, uh, this uh, beautiful mountain in the center of France. So at that moment, nobody dared to land on a mountain, as you can imagine with these kind of uh, things. So I asked myself the question, why we guys in Michelin company, they were so crazy to do these kind of things? Because at that moment, we wanted to push the new way of transportation, which was the aircraft business, because we wanted this business to become something not just for few people to, to enjoy or just to, to have uh, airplanes to, to go to the war, but uh, to have something to transport people, a new way of transportation. So we pushed, as a tire manufacturer, the aircraft industry. And um, the next picture that I'm going to show you is the top of the mountain that you see, just uh, not the first one, it's a hole, it's difficult to land. But uh, you see people manage, after three years, to land on Michelin tires in Clermont-Ferrand in 1911 on top of this, uh, this mountain. So because we care about giving people a better way forward. Moving forward, I see the time is running, I will go faster. So you have the two founders of our company, André and Edward Michelin. So the guy who is, uh, this picture is, uh, I think at the beginning of the creation of our company, and you have the CEO of the company with workers, you have uh, Edward Michelin, the founder, who is among the, the workers because he was observing how we produce tires at that moment. He was, a, he was an artist now, he was not an engineer, and he learned with workers how to, how to do that. But what is interesting, the guy who invented the radial tire that you enjoy today, entered to our company, and this is not a joke, this is a true story, as a repair worker in financial department. He was just uh, maintaining, I don't know, the wall or something that needed to repair. And, and uh, the founders, the CEO was there and he observed how this guy is working. And he said, wow, this guy is working so differently compared to others. So he asked the HR department to send him to the financial department. And he became a very good, uh, let's say, controller, if we talk with our words today. And as he get used to work with the CEO, and the CEO saw that uh, he, is, uh, he has some potentials, they sent him to R&D Center. And this guy in R&D Center, he invented the radial tire. His name is Marius Bignol, his name is a French guy, but he entered Michelin company as a simple worker to repair things. Because we care about giving people inside our company a better way forward, and we are purpose-driven, our founders always think that we should break the stone to find the diamond shining inside. It means that we should look at what's inside people and not just look at what is the, the surface. Everybody, that's why we believe that everybody is unique in our company. For the same reason, so biodiversity is very a la mode and famous today. Everybody would like to do that. But in 2003, it means 18 years ago, so when we started our factories in Brazil, at the same moment, we invested a lot of money to create uh, 300 hectares of uh, an area that we call it today Ouro Verde Bahia is an ecological reserve in Brazil to protect some animals, to protect some 
let's say, plants and to protect the biodiversity in this area, which is uh, not very far from our factories. So because we care about giving people a better way forward. That's why I mentioned to you that your purpose is present in every decision-making and investment of the company. Nobody asked us in 2003 to invest in such a thing. Coming back to Shanghai. So we sell already very good tires in China for bus and truck business. But we invented a new tire, we call it X1. It's not the Air Force One, it's the Air X1. <laughs> and this tire can replace two tires. The high is, uh, is uh, not high as a, as a normal tire because, because of the design. So there is more space. And uh, as the tire is not high, so the level of uh, the interior of the bus can be adjusted to the same level uh, the people. You don't need to step to jump in, your, uh, in, your, in the bus. So why we do that? We are already making money, selling tires. We have good products in Chinese market. <laughs> but we invented something that will give more place inside the bus and is much more sympathetic to get into the bus. I can tell you that in terms of technology is huge because it replaces, we need to replace two tire but one tire. And the tire is very large. But when the tire is large, you have some technical problem to solve. Because our innovation has been always purpose driven. Because we are not doing that just for money. Because we are doing that for people. And this is not a joke. If you take the 71 route in, uh, in Shanghai, you can see, just look at the tires. I'm the only crazy guy looking at tires when I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be afraid. Everything is fine with me. But when I walk, I look at tires. So, <laughs> and if you, if you see someone looking at tires, instead of looking at buildings or the museum, probably is a Michelin guy. <laughs> After that, so as we are, we still continue, continue being purpose driven, we ask ourselves the question, so now the materials are becoming important. Materials are noble. It should be biodegradable. And uh, for safety reasons, you know, one of the biggest problem with a tire is uh, when uh, you don't have air and your tire is becoming dangerous something that is very good and comfortable is becoming the most dangerous part of your car or the bus or the truck. So we said, can we invent the airless tire? <laughs> Not a tubeless tire, the airless tire. So uh, as we are driven by our purpose, which is caring or giving people a better way forward, we said, OK, let's try to see if we can do that. So this is a vision tire. You cannot buy it. And we don't know yet how to do that. So this is a model. It's printed with our 3D printers built by Michelin. We would like it to be connected. We would like it to be biodegradable and, and is airless because you have plenty of holes. And we don't use materials everywhere because it's designed based on the constraints who are engineers, they will understand me. So you put the materials when you need to have something in tension or in traction. So you can tell me, yes, it's easy to do, to be purpose driven and selling dreams. So we are not a dream seller in our company. That's why I mentioned to you, your purpose will tell people who truly you are. So this is not a fake tire. This is on the test in France today with uh, two uh, big manufacturers, OEMs. And uh, probably in one or two years, because we need to test it to certify it, in one or two years, your car will be equipped with 
this kind of tires. Because it's much more environmentally friendly, it's safe, and uh, the, um, you know, the rubber which is in contact with the ground, you don't need to change your whole tires. You will go to Michelin company, we will just print with our 3D printers, okay, your, uh, the part of the tire which is in contact with the ground. And the rest, you don't need to change it. You know, you change your tire because of the trap depth. It means that the part which is in contact with the ground is, is gone. So you don't need to change the whole tire. So as we care about giving people a better way forward, so we are going to propose you this kind of products. If I move forward, so we are talking about data every day. Everybody would like to be data-driven, blah, blah, blah. But you should do your data-driven approach by being purpose-driven. So we use data because we provide exceptional services for our customers. It can be a track connect, I'm not going through details, through uh, you can see your behavior on your car, on your smartphone. We provide productivity solutions for buses, safety, eye silent for uh, if you are running flat, someone will help you. So you should be purpose driven in the way that you work. And at the end of the day, the way that we are moving forward since years is the same. As we believe since years, as I mentioned to you, that uh, we, we care about giving people a better way forward. We believe that everybody is unique. So in our company today, I hope that who are in our company today in this room uh, can testify after this, uh, this session, that uh, we believe that everybody is unique and our job is to help people, to help people to become who they are and not to transform them to something that we want them to become. This is the difference between being purpose-driven or being profit-driven. I took some other examples. Uh, this is our factory in Shenyang. So today, everybody is talking about decarbonization, zero emission. This is not new for us. Since 2014 in China, so this is not uh, somewhere in France, this is in China, we have a plan and we start reducing our emissions in our factory in China. And nobody asks us to do that. But we are doing that because we are purpose-driven. Because we believe that we cannot destroy the planet when we do our business in China. The same thing, another example of connectivity, safety for aircraft industry. So 2019 is new. So Michelin set up the first connected tire. You know, in aircraft business, it's very tricky to have connected objects. So, but we invented the first connected aircraft tire that give all information from uh, takeoff and landing, which are the most critical moments, as you know, for the tire. I still remember the, the Concorde accident was yes. linked to a yes. tire. Yes. Yes. yes, to a tire, yes. Because it ran on, on, on some objects uh, remaining from. So, and, and uh, in, a, in a very interactive mode, so the tire in life is giving the information on pressure, temperature, and many other things, the formation, to the pilot and to people who are, who are managing the maintenance. So they don't need to go. They can say, do I need to change the tire when it will land or not? This example, I like it. And I will give you, so this is normal. Everybody helped the country in China and out of China to, to overcome this crisis. But we set up, in March, to, that was in March 2020, a kind of, uh, we call it ambulance guardianship program. So we said, uh, the, at this moment, the ambulance should work. So and every minute is important because they need to bring people to the, to the hospital. So we said any ambulance in China can go to our retail network and change the tire, fast speed repair for free. That one is easy, but the question came on the table. 
And this is a good example of being purpose-driven. So our retail network, they asked us, if I don't have a Michelin tire in the stock, or we don't provide oil dimension for all of the cars of, in the world, so some cars we don't have the tire, but our competitors are providing these tires. So what should I do? I don't have, I let the, the car go. It took us 10 seconds collectively in management team to say, no, you will buy a competitor's tire and you will fix the problem. I can tell you that um, we, we mounted more compet our competitors' tires during this program more than our own tires. Because some people need tier two and tier three brands and uh, we don't have tier two, three brands in, in China. So. But you know, when your purpose is clear, and I really invite you, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, if I may give you a tip, you cannot decide for your purpose and values during the crisis. You should clarify things with yourself and your company before. And if you are clear before, when these situations happen, is no brainer. We care about giving people a better way forward. We don't want to make advertisement. Nobody knows about that. We even didn't mention that. That was just in our retail network. We said ambulance is coming, and we called all uh, you know the fleets of uh, ambulance and hospital to saying that this program exists. Just go there. But we, we managed that immediately. And um, the same thing. You can say, what the hell these guys are doing in hydrogen mobility? <laughs> they are just tire sellers. We are not tire sellers. We care about giving people a better way forward. And a better way forward today is using new energies. And one of the new energies is hydrogen mobility. You will not believe me, but Michelin company is doing research on hydrogen fuel cell since 15 years. That's why we were capable immediately to, to put in place. This is a joint venture that we created with Forestia company. The name of the company is Symbio, Symbio in, in French. And we built the first uh, fuel cell in France. The first factory of fuel cell in Europe is under construction. It's a Forestia Michelin factory. So you see, we are not a tire seller. We have our purpose. And uh, by the way, we are now pushing the races in uh, 24 hours of Le Mans, 24 hours du Mans, uh, not to use a traditional engine and to use new energy uh, proposers and we push for hydrogen. So in our company, so the examples, I'm sure that you can find it in many companies. Uh, I'm working for Michelin since 18 years, so uh, I cannot provide you, and this is what the objective of today, to provide you examples of other companies. Uh, but hopefully, for all of us, we are not the only purpose-driven company in the world. So you can find this kind of examples in many companies, hopefully, once again. But something that is important, that's why I present you many examples. What is authentic in our company, out of our purpose, which is we care about giving people a better world forward, our vision is all sustainable. We think that everything should be sustainable, from business to planet to rubber, to fuel cell, to aircraft business, everything should be sustainable. That's why our strategy is based on three pillars. We call it profit. We are a private company. Private company, I'm not going to explain to you, <laughs> if you are not profitable, you close the door. So for our independence, and even more important, because being profitable is not enough now, you should create value. And value creation, I can explain it to you uh, later if you are interested. You need to do that to stay independent. Because if not, some nice hedge funds will come to you, like Dan and company today, unfortunately, and saying that you are nice, you are friendly, but uh, 
your, your shares in the French stock market decreased by 25%. So, Mr. CEO, you are a good guy, but maybe you should leave. So we don't want to become, you don't, we don't want to welcome this kind of moves into our shareholder uh, assembly or shareholder uh, pact of uh, companies or investors. We believe on people. I hope that I convinced you that we have a deep belief on people. We don't want to transform people. We welcome people as they are. And we would like to put an ecosystem for them to become to become who they are based on their potential. And the last one, we believe on the protection of planet. So for us, what is important? Something is very important, and I invite you to think about that. As a su sustainable company, we believe that what's important is the balance between profit, people, and planet. That's why in different moments of our life, we have chosen different decisions to protect the planet at a huge cost. Ambulance guardianship, huge cost, but it's compatible with our purpose. Just a communication, when you are a purpose-driven company, I'm not going through details. This is the 15th of February. This is the announcement of the results of the company. As you see, we didn't just talk about our financials. We talk about profit, people, and planet. Because when you are purpose-driven, you should walk the talk. You can find this document on the website of Michelin. So you have even more documents if you are interested to, to know more about that. And even in China, I'm very proud of this picture in our office. Because in 2020, we, we are in a closed session. So we were among the first companies to, to support the Wuhan city financially. We gave more than 1,000 uh, truck and bus tires for free to companies who construct this, uh, this um, hospital in, in Wuhan, and we, have, we set up this guardianship program. I can tell you, as a CEO, I just uh, was seeing the cost, uh, <laughs> but we knew why we did it. But the same year that we are doing this kind of things, so first thing, we received the, 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 the trophy of one of the best performing uh, companies as an economical point of view. It means profit from Changning District in Shanghai. So it's new, we received that in January, because we paid a lot of taxes. <laughs> it's true, but it means, yes, we are profitable. I'm very happy to be profitable and pay more taxes. I have no any problem. The second thing is we have been recognized as a sustainable company. This is the second trophy that you see, because we work a lot for environment and for road safety, for example, and in our factories for, uh, for the emission of our factories, both in Shanghai and Shenyang. We received this new, this beautiful, uh, let's say, plaque from, uh, from Wuhan Charity Foundation, because we were among the first. We gave, it, we gave this donation on 20, that was 23 of uh, January. We make our donation. So you can imagine what does it mean? So yes, when, when, when you are clear on your purpose, you don't wait to say, we don't know what's that. It seems that it's serious, it's dangerous. We are not a, a, a medical company. The only things that we can do for the moment is financial. After that, we saw that we can buy our tires, we can do that. And the last one, for the first time the same year, we obtained, we have been certified the top employers in China because people recognize that Mr. Bibandom finally is a good employer. So I would like to say, when you are clear on your purpose, uh, maybe you increase your costs. But at the end of the day, uh, we grow double digit in China last year. So is it for a tire business company, is not bad. So we, we surpassed <laughs> even what we said to the company before crisis. So when you are clear in your purpose, you are resilient. People are loyal to our brand. Your employer, employees are loyal to our brand. They give their best for the company. Customers recognize you. They support you during the crisis. They buy your products. They buy your services. And they know that 
at, at the moment that they need, you are also here to support them. At the end of the day, so people, I mean, profit, people, planet, we did the job. Few slides to explain you about China. This is just my personal point of view. I like this sentence. Read this book. I'm sure that you already read it and you know that by heart. I just discovered that. But the world is changing heavily, like the water. And this is a tip for people who are going to the war. Uh, but it's true for a business. So like the, the, the water has no shape. So the meaning is in a, in a warfare, so there is no shape. So you should be like the water and change. So, but what's happening in China especially, we are in a very nice moment of the economy of China, which is totally transforming from this crazy race for growth in quantity to the growth of quality. We have the dual circulation. You know about that. I'm not going to explain it to you. We have the opening up. And, uh, and this economy is going to be focused on high quality growth, which is very different from the model of China, which was a growth of quantity. This growth needs three things. Innovation, you saw that when you are purpose driven, you innovate naturally. This growth will be scientific based and this growth will be technology focused. This is my conviction. And if you look at the five year plan, you will find uh, some elements of what I'm saying to you today. So this ability to change, to go through this journey is key. To be innovative, to be to be scientific uh, based and to be technology driven on digital insight. So I believe that only purpose driven companies in upcoming years who are authentic, who had a clear goal beyond the goal, they are not here just to make money and they can show truly who they are to Chinese market and consumer. They can resist this big change. They can continue innovating and revive. Before we move on to q and I just want to echo um, Carmen in terms of we, I see we have uh, our current students in the audience. They are not here by um, accident. They took a very conscious decision to take a two year out of their career. I think they're all trying to find their meaning, their purpose, their reason for change, why they're here. And another group that I see is actually our alumni. For example, those who graduated. However, for example, Nico, he is actually the president of Sustainability Club of our Alumni Association. He is still moving, striving towards that change um, that he believe he has conviction for. So now we're just gonna move for a question because we have a full house today. May I say we limit to one question per person? And uh, please let us know your name and maybe your batch. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your sharing, Ms. Kamara. Uh, I'm Anson from MB2022. I really like the sentence of a purpose, the, the, the goal of the goal. But uh, sometimes there's dilemma for some companies, especially for new companies, because um, in the beginning, they, have, they are not very uh, have, don't have very good profit and they want to survive and maybe they need to uh, look for better profit and uh, they cannot realize their purpose. So um, how do you think we should balance between these, the purpose and uh, sometimes the profit? As I mentioned to you, you know, I'm a fan of profitability because without profit, you cannot survive, frankly speaking. And without profit, there is no company. Let's be... Without, you, you, should, you should help yourself first before helping others, planet and people. So profitability is key. But uh, as I also work on new business model in our company, because yes, our company is big, but many things are new. For example, hydrogen is a new business model for us. But, uh, but when we invest, we look at the, the goal of the goal, because this is what retain us during this resilient journey that we need to go through. At the beginning, yes, it's difficult, but I think that even investors now, they are looking more and more at uh, 
at the startups who have a goal beyond the goal, or they have the goal of the goal and they, they finance uh, some startups. After that, once again, I, as I mentioned to you, people profit planet is a question of balance. So maybe it's a part of your journey, you should be first more focused on your profitability. After that, when you become uh, your muscles are, are trained and, and uh, ready, you can go and help people. And after that, they plan it. Of course, uh, you know, when Michelin invests, I don't know, is in 3,000 3, hectares in Brazil, it's a huge amount of money or the things that we did. But we can afford that because uh, we are a big corporation. But, uh, but I can tell you at the beginning, we think, I mean, when we arrived in China, I think that the question was not uh, how to how to do a guardianship program, for example. I mean, even out of crisis. That was uh, our factories, we built, we start, uh, we are profitable, we can pay people, after that create value, and after that. But what's important in your journey, probably, you need to think about this. But what I invite to do, I don't have, uh, you know, the magic uh, answer to your question, but uh, I think that you, based on the way that we work, try to, to find the right balance at any moment between people, profit, and planet. Thanks. Sean? Hello, um, Karen. My name is Sean Wong from MBA Batch uh, 2021. So uh, I have one question, please. Uh, my question is, so when, it's like at what point when you start to have a purpose, because there's always a starting point when you start to have it. Um, I wonder, like, during that, when do you start to have it? And during the entire process, the entire journey, does it ever change? And should it be changed? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think that, yes, the, the purpose uh, needs to be enhanced and needs to be lived and transformed with the time. Uh, maybe if... Uh, if one day we can meet, I don't know, uh, Mr. the Michelin uh, brothers uh, to ask them the question, if at that moment you, you, you thought about caring uh, to give uh, people a better way forward, probably no. But at that moment, they, you know, the, these guys, was, were, one was a paint, the other was an engineer with Mr. Eiffel, uh, the Eiffel Tower. So, and, uh, and they went from Paris to Clermont-Ferrand because uh, this familial company, which was not at all a tire company, but was a caoutchouc company building some pumps in 1888, was going to be bankrupt. And the grandma called them to come. So the first reason was, okay, the familial company is going to be bankrupt. Seems that you guys are a little bit clever, so come back uh, and to see. But, you know, first that was, but when they discovered, when this famous guy, we don't have time to go to this explanation, but they discovered the tire, but a guy who was in a bicycle, and uh, he, uh, he's, uh, let's say, the, what we call tire today, uh, have a problem, and they said, this company, they know how to manipulate caoutchouc, so go there, and uh, probably they can fix your problem. And, and they find that, wow, you have something that, that is much more uh, sympathetic than this uh, iron wheel that uh, you are shaked when you are moving forward. And step by step, you know, I think that the, a part of the personal conviction also came to the, came to the game. But uh, to be concrete, I think that yes, the purpose is enhancing with the time. For example, now we are, we are, we are moving from mobility to motion in our company because our purpose is always the same. But uh, we say that uh, because hydrogen is not about mobility. Hydrogen is energy. Uh, connectivity is not about mobility, it's about motion, connection. So, uh, and probably maybe in five years, I will come back to you saying that we still continue, mm, we care about uh, giving people a for forward, but we also add these things to our purpose. But uh, what's important like, is what will not change because we are working on that in our company, the value is always the same. After that, the way that you express your purpose can change because we are working on that today in our company. That's why I'm saying to you maybe in five years, our purpose will be much more broader than that. 
Lush. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. My name is Nico from uh, Global EMBA 15. Uh, very passionate about sustainability and it's wonderful to see at Seeps also with the current MBA, so much is going on. Um, it's so impressive what you guys are doing and you're so innovative. Could you share with us a little bit how you manage that innovation and how you make sure you allocate resources, financially, people, mm -hmm. to always look ahead what is coming in 10 years, 20 years, so forth? Yes. So, um, so first of all, uh, what, what we, we launched a few years ago, the open innovation approach, because innovation was reserved to some nice people in our R&D center in France. So if you were not there, you cannot uh, be innovative, which is totally false. We opened the door from product innovation to service innovation. And after that, we said even you can be innovative in your distribution. For example, last year, we totally transformed or distribution in China, which is a totally a new innovative model. Doesn't exist somewhere else in the world. So it means that we open the door. We, we sell that innovation is not just the products. What we are doing now, so we have a strategic budget at the company. For example, we have uh, 400 million euro, 500 million, million euro now, this uh, allocation of the budget to the, to the R&D of Tire. And now we are moving a part of that to new, uh, new domain, which are experience of mobility, which is high-tech materials, and uh, for the development of service. At the same moment, we set up what we call the Corporate Innovation Board. It means that for the first time, a few years ago, Michelin asked some other people from universities, from other companies, to say, please help us to think about innovation. Because before that was very closed. So when you sum up all these actions and probably others that I don't know because, uh, you know, since the last 10 years I was uh, in Poland, in Moscow, and after that in, now in China. So, but I, these, these things, I saw this uh, global trend of the company. But very clearly, for example, a, a, we know that a, a part of our strategic budget for R&D will be allocated to new activities. Okay, so... After that, what we try to do, this is another story, which needs probably another session to talk together. In our management, we try to change ourselves, to empower people, to think about the impact that they have in their daily job, and not just to follow processes. And I started that by myself, to manage my management team, who are vice president of the company, some of them are here. And there. So to say, okay, these guys probably they don't need every day to tell them you should sell, you should hire, and you should communicate. So, uh, but uh, and to, to do things differently. So by changing, I'm very confident because we, we do that in our industry. We, and we transform our industry totally. I mean, uh, when I entered in our company, uh, I was a quality manager, I say workshop manager very quickly, but when people wanted to stop a machine in 2020, when I entered Michelin company, they should come to the workshop manager. I was in France. I have 400 people in my workshop. They should come to me, sign a paper to say, yes, you can stop your machine because uh, the stock is uh, three times more than what you need in assembly machines or the next steps of the production. Today, people will laugh. Even in China, I mean, we have the most modern factory of our company in China. So you have visibility of stock. You are in the right first time. I mean, I, mean, I am a fan of lean, in case you don't know. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and with a um, with pool model, we get visibility of the stock and people stop, start, change the dimension, Apple for preventive maintenance. So we did that. It took us 10 years, 10 years to implement fully worldwide with the right level of maturity. I think that in our, in our innovation, we started a few years ago to do the same thing. And I'm confident. Because this is a business reason also behind. And there is a, as I mentioned to you, there is a 3P behind. It's about people, profit, and also planet. We need three of them. I think we have time for one last question, Bernard. Microphone? You can use the microphone in front of you. Um, you mentioned people quite a few times. The loss is like, you know, you have to crack the stone to find the diamonds. So like, I just wanted to like um, hear your thoughts on like the people development aspects. Like, 
there's like processes you mentioned, but also the cultural element. How do you actually kind of institutionalize that so you also you know the process in place, but as you go forward, that you can keep on finding those diamonds in the stones within the organization and then make sure that the purpose-driven mindset filters and is going to check, cross-check and balance so that reinforces throughout the future. So I'm talking under control of our HR director, which is here. <laughs> so um, sorry, Lily, just let me know. Uh, but uh, no, out of that, there, there are, frankly speaking, there are two things that we are changing. First of all, we are really committed in management team, especially in China, for the reason that I mentioned to you at the end quickly. We need to change the way that we manage people. And when you change the, the way that you manage people, you will attract them differently. It means that you, by having some transversal, we set up, for example, for the first time, maybe you can say every company has it, but uh, we didn't have it. Now we have a portfolio of the 10 strategic projects of the company in China, not the list of 50 projects that everybody is working and you don't know at the end of the day. And we, in these 10 projects, we tell that we would like to work in a squad mode. It means that you have your budget, you tell what you need, you are autonomous, and uh, you have just uh, one management team member who will who is your sponsor, but uh, no steering committee, no checking every day. So we would like to change totally the way that we work. I think that this shining diamond will happen when you let people, because I have the experience in my previous job when I was in industry and when I was in Moscow. When you let people really without micromanaging every day what they should do, when you let them innovate, when you let them decide. They will make some errors, but this is not a problem. The second thing is as manager, and it starts as you as manager. That's why I'm working a lot on myself. So uh, I even took a coach recently to coach me because I need to understand that I cannot continue managing people like I managed 10, 10 years ago or five years ago, especially in China. I mean, you are here, you see, how quick things are changing. So I need time to, to think about the strategy of the company, the project, investment. We are lacking a huge capacity now in China. So uh, what are the, and how we are going digital? So we just started uh, in December working with Tencent on, on data collaboration. I just discovered that we are the first B2B company in China starting to doing that with Tencent. Because B2C companies, they know how to do that. I mean. But we are the first B2B company, so to do that. So uh, how, to, how, to manage, uh, how to manage this kind of thing? So uh, and the only way that we find in management team is we need to change the way that we manage people first. And second, as I mentioned to you, we need to put in place an ecosystem so people can shine. But this ecosystem, you know, one of my team members who was retired when I was in France was saying me because I was, you know, young, trying to push the project, we need to do that. And uh, let's control, let's uh, steering committee, blah, blah, blah. And one day he told me, you know, a, a tree, uh, if you pull <laughs> stronger, it will not grow up. So you should just uh, put the right grains, fertilizer, give the water and put it in a, in a very shiny area. So uh, this tree naturally will grow up. And this is the way that we need to manage our people. I'm not saying that I'm a perfect example in our company today. I'm working on myself. And uh, sorry, sorry. Yes, Scarlet is a good example. So we are just giving water every morning when Scarlet arrives at work. <laughs> <laughs> and we put uh, her office near my office in a very shiny place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, I think that, uh, you know, what you said is all about really sincerely spending time with people. This is what I'm learning every day. I'm not uh, very old, so I have time to learn many things still. But uh, when you sincerely spend time with, with people, they will tell you the solution. They will give you the way that you should work. But do not do that because you have an HR process that you need to meet people and make a review. Do that because you are truly interested on what's inside these people. And I'm trying to learn that more and more and apply it to my management. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.